Today's secondary science resource review should move on apace as we explore three resources for teaching forces and motion. They are a CD-ROM for teaching terminal velocity, a collection of interactive modules and a database of test questions. Recommending today's resources, we have Dr Nick Palmer, AST and SLT at Bishop Stopford C of E School in Enfield, Middlesex. Mm. And on the panel today, we have Alam Shaha, physics teacher at Camden School for Girls in London, and Tim Tranquada, secondary science consultant for the School Advisory and Improvement Service, Essex LA. And Matthew Tosh, our resource investigator, is visiting schools to find out what teachers and pupils make of our resources. So Nick, let's talk about your first choice of resource for us today. It's a CD-ROM, all about terminal velocity. Mm -hmm. Tell us about this resource and why you like it. The reason I've chosen this particular resource is the Multimedia Science School resource. It is something which you can't do in the classroom. It's stimulating, it's exciting, gets the kids involved. It is a really a simulation program about an, an individual falling through the air and you can see how the velocity changes over a period of time. And you can put on a parachute if you so wish, a small okay. parachute or a large parachute, or in fact get the parachute removed in mid-flight. <laughs> okay. It's really, really exciting. Pretty dangerous. Thanks, Nick, for that description. Now let's go over to Matthew. He's sped off to St Paul's Catholic College in Burgess Hill in Sussex to see the resource in action. This is Multimedia Science School, the Terminal Velocity module. Now, we've got a cycling scenario here, as our cyclist, and a whole set of controls over here. If I hit the go button, then you can see the bike starts to move. We can display the forces, and we can change the pedal force using this slider here. Now, at the very bottom, you've got a velocity time graph, so it's useful for students to see that in comparison to what's going on. You can change the type of bike, but you can also change the scenario. We've got the cyclist, but we've also got a parachutist. Here's our parachute scenario, again with all the controls, but let's not spoil the surprise. We'll go over now to see Phil Martin and his Year 11 class. Okay. Now, I'm going to pause it there, and what I'd like you to do this time is now to take this, okay, don't have to have any values on it, but I want you to draw for me a parachutist, okay, who does this. Phil, can you tell me how you've been using Multimedia Science School today? Yes, well, the... the, the the purpose of, of its use today was to allow the students to assess their own understanding of the, the concept of terminal velocity. They've seen it before and today was to reflect upon their learning and, and, and check for any misconceptions, I suppose. What do you think this adds to the students' learning experience? Well, this particular module I think adds considerably because uh, I can't take a student and demonstrate them falling out of aeroplane as a, and, and fall into their terminal velocity, uh, whereas other units on the multimedia science may be um, you know, we can explore in the classroom, you know, the hands-on activity. Now, you've just seen an animation on the board. How has that helped you with your understanding? Uh, well, when you sort of see it happening and the, um, the numbers sort of relating to it, it sort of helps you take in and understand it, I guess. It would be good for students to use it on their laptops so they can have their own interaction and uh, it would be more interactive for them themselves rather than uh, watching me or someone else manipulate it on a whiteboard. So Phil, what are your overall views of this package? Yeah, I liked it. I like the modularity of it, where we could choose um, modules to show phenomena that we no wouldn't normally see. Um, the students liked it. It's uh, interactive and uh, very good. Thank you very much. Well, it's thumbs up here. What do our studio panel think? Let's go back to them. What do you make of the terminal velocity CD-ROM? Well, to be honest, I was, I was slightly disappointed by it. I'm familiar with an ancestor of this product. Um, about 10 years ago, I, I was using something called Multimedia Motion, um, which had a very similar layout. Um, and they had this great piece where um, they had video footage of a shuttle taking off. And you could click on the picture, stop it frame by frame, and then you could get a plot of the distance time graph. Um, so it was a real image. And you were making the distance time graph yourself, and, and you were encouraged to do the analysis yourself. This, I think it's actually got some flaws and the first uh, very serious flaw for me is the use of animation instead of real, real live action footage. And also the, the in interactivity I think could be better. For example, I think you could plot the distance time graph yourself. I, I can see that it's been well thought out, but 10 years later this product should be a lot better. Nick, what would you say to that? 
the idea of learning for me is to see things that can't happen. It's nice to have a footage of space shuttles taking off. This is something in the classroom. It's real. It's simulating something that you cannot do. This resource can be used right across the, um, say, key stages. OK, well, let's bring in Tim. What do you think? Well, I'd like to go back a further stage from animation to real life, as Alan was saying, through video footage to the children actually doing it for themselves in the classroom. There are ways they can play with simple parachutes just to see for themselves that the parachute will accelerate and then fall at a constant velocity. Once they have experienced it for themselves, I think then is when something like this becomes very powerful. I like the element of control. I like the element of the pupils being able to change the forces and see what happens. I like the graph being plotted whilst the object is in motion. I think I'd probably use it by saying stop it now and now predict what will happen next so that you'd get them even more engaged. OK, thank you all. Well, it's time now to move on to Nick's second choice of resource for us today, which is on the table there. It's BoardWorks, Key Stage 3 and GCSE Science. Nick, give us an overview of this resource and why you like it. The reason why I like it, it allows you to manipulate the topic itself in any form you like. You can, do cut, you can cut out and paste uh, one item to another, modify, change the words, right. and you can see simulations that you can do. Some bits I don't particularly like, but there are certain bits I think the physics section for me is outstanding. And is this a, a resource for the teacher to use on the interactive whiteboard essentially or can the pupils get their hands on it too? The, uh, particularly what I do with uh, use it with is to get children to use it on their laptops okay. so they can begin to utilise it and so we're all into the uh, world of independent learning right. and this is I think it's ideal there are questions on the way that they can do before the answers are given and there are also quizzes at the end which they can do to see how well they've actually learnt it. Thank you. Well, now let's go back to Matthew to see how BoardWorks goes down in the classroom. Well, I'm here at the school and Peter Clark is about to start a revision lesson with his GCSE Year 11 Physics class. Let's see how they get on with BoardWorks Science. Can anybody tell me the difference between speed and velocity? Hayden. Velocity is dependent on direction. Good. Velocity is speed but in a certain direction. Good. Peter, can you talk me through the lesson today and how you've been using the resource? Well, it was a revision lesson on speed, velocity, acceleration and distance time graphs and speed time graphs. So we used the BoardWorks PowerPoints uh, as a means of revision. Um, if we want to find out the speed, then you cover up the S. S equals D divided by T. What would T equal? It's a complete package. Yes. There's familiarity between topics. There's, a, there's a, a set look to it. And I think the animations are really important. Um, they give something that a textbook doesn't... Now, is there anything that perhaps you don't like about it? Some of the slides are a bit repetitive, perhaps, and um, from the student feedback, uh, the use of video clips would be, would be welcomed. It's not cheap. Do you think it represents good value for money? As a standalone um, teacher-led tool, probably not. But if students were to access it on a VLE, um, I think it would be value for money, yes. So your overall thoughts of the package? Very good. Um, not to be used as a whole lesson teacher-led from the front. I'd like to see some video clips included as well to, to put the science into context would be very useful. Thank you very much. OK, well, that's what the school thinks. What do our panel think? Back to the studio. Well, Tim, if you can get over the price of this resource, do you think it's worthwhile? Well, I, I was pleased, first of all, that the teacher in the clip said that he used it mainly for revision. I have problems with becoming very mechanistic, of putting your finger on this and doing something else with the D and T. I don't think that's in increasing a child's understanding. It's too mechanistic. But as a revision tool, it could be very useful. I think that the section on gravity has some built-in very serious misconceptions. For example, a lot of children think once you're in space, which is where the space shuttle is, there is no gravity. That is a very serious misconception which board work actually continues. I think as the teacher is effective in teaching the topic well, he or she could use that misconception and say what is actually wrong with this particular diagram. Alan, what do you think? Um, I'd have to say if it was free I would use it. Um, we have some board work stuff at the school I work at and, and I seem to work at a school that is PowerPoint crazy. It's a great resource particularly because you can uh, adjust the PowerPoints um, and change certain things that you might not like. So you could take out that slide on the geostationary uh, satellite, you can change the questions, you can uh, put your own bits and pieces in. I do really like it but 
the big problem is the price and um, I work in a school with lots of enthusiastic young teachers who are making their own PowerPoint presentations and then making them available to the whole department. Mm -hmm. So there's already a presentation on distance time graphs, for example, done by a teacher, which is very good, and I'd probably use that because it was free. It may well be expensive, yeah. but it's a resource for members of staff who don't have the time. OK. Well, let's move on now to Nick's third choice of resource for us today, and it's called TestBase, and it's from QCA. Nick, explain this resource to us. The reason why I've chosen TestBase, because I just feel it covers the cross-section. You could do Key Stage 2, 3, 4 and 5 if you wanted to. And in terms of what it produces, I can, at the click of a button, select the topic I want. I can select the level I want and almost go back several years to see what they've actually produced. All the QCA papers that have ever been published uh, by them are on this uh, CD-ROM. Right. And I can access any one of them at the flick of a button. I can create a worksheet immediately. I can grade my levels instantaneously. What I also like about it are the examiner comments. What we have here is, is, you can see on the left how many minutes you should spend on that question so the pace children can get right and uh, the marks that are allocated to it. If I sort of click on this particular part, it immediately brings up the answers that they should be writing and what is also acceptable. I think it's a fantastic resource and I would use it and I recommend it to anyone. OK, well let's see what the panel think. Alan? I, it's fantastic, what else can you say about it really? We <laughs> already use it. All the points that you made, it saves all that time we used to have to spend uh, physically cutting and pasting stuff together. Um, one feature you didn't mention, which I absolutely love, you can export directly into a Word document. Oh, and um, yes. so something it doesn't do for you, which we always do, we always shrink down mm -hmm. so that we don't waste so much paper. And, and once you've exported it into a Word document, you can do all sorts of things. Right. So it's, that's, that's a fantastic yeah. feature. OK, well, Tim, very popular here. Do you agree? I do. I think it's got a tremendous strength, and the strength is in the use of language. If, as you said, Nick, you can get up a level four question, then you can reinforce with the students that it's just about labelling, listing, recalling, very low-level skills. If you go to a level five, it's starting to bring in description. If you go to level six, it's explanation. If you go to the number of lines available to write an answer, the lines go up as you go up in levels. You're expected to write more. So I think there is tremendous strength there. I think the weakness is, again, how it might be used by weaker teachers. Mm -hmm. If when you come to so-called revision sessions, it's just endless doing past SATs or national test mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. But I think it has got tremendous I strengths. agree with you totally. I think on that part where you said endless questions, I think you could use it as a diagnostic tool mm -hmm. as to where, which particular area of the question the pupils are having great difficulty with and targeting those at different levels would be more appropriate. Well, thanks very much. That's all we've got time for today. But just to recap, the three resources that we've looked at are Multimedia Science School, Terminal Velocity from RM PLC, Boardworks, Key Stage 3 and GCSE Science from Boardworks Limited, and Test Base Key Stage 3 Science from QCA. For more information about the resources that we featured today, go to our website, it's teachers.tv forward slash resource review, or if you want to email us, resource review at teachers.tv. A very big thank you to our panel, to Nick, to Alom and to Tim. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye bye.